Hi everyone. I'm glad to be here today and have a chance to give you some stories or answers on the questions I received from Tim Latino because uh, I found this idea pretty interesting and uh, useful for many, many dancers around the world. The first question, in fact, is why I was start dancing and when that happened. I was born in a country which does not exist anymore. It used to be called Soviet Union. In Ukraine, now it's Ukraine, in a city called Sumy. And when I was in my first class of school, being seven years old, a school teacher collect us boys and girls in a small group and she started to study us some pretty new dance style at that moment in our country in Soviet Union called ballroom dancing. Uh, I was just seven but I found that dancing pretty interesting. A bit later uh, I've been moved as one of the few most talented students from that group to the Pioneer House. It's like a, in Soviet time, it was a place where young uh, kids, talented kids, has opportunity to study different kind of activities, including art activities. It was more serious then, uh, but at that time we didn't have too many competitions. The major goal was uh, demonstration, performance on the stage on different occasions, city occasions, uh, celebrations, whatever, um, meetings and so on. Uh, later I started to dance in the House of Culture, which was already a, club, a dance club for adults. But still, uh, again, not too many competitions and mostly performing at the concerts. So my first answer is I was seven when I started my dancing. In parallel to that, I always been very busy with uh, other activities, sport activities, for example. I was pretty good football player. I was a uh, team captain on the master team. Uh, if I was not going to be injured, maybe I will be a football player. I used to play music a lot, accordion, forte piano, guitar and drums later in the band. I have degrees in shooting, swimming, chess. Uh, actually, any kind of activities, uh, I didn't miss them. I did ballet, I did folk dance. Why I'm just make this list of uh, interest I expressed my talents in that later all that come together and helped me a lot to be who I am now. So my first advice, and I will use this opportunity, of course, to give you a lot of advices beside the stories of my life, to be interested, to be successful in the future, uh, make yourself as more interested as possible. I was born in a normal family. My parents were not billionaires. I didn't have sponsors in my dance career. I came from the small city. Most people even never heard this name of that city. But luckily, uh, I achieved what I achieved and now I'm here in front of you. That means this achievement's worth something. And I always tell, tell everybody that you can do the same. Everyone can do it if you have goal, if you're concentrated, if you're clever enough, and if you're lucky to meet correct people on your life way. Question number two from all great teachers that you had who has inspired the most your dancing? Pretty good question. In fact, to reach the top, mostly all dancers currently today in the entire world, I will say all of them, are using 
more than one teaches. Of course, it's one who start your interest at the beginning. But to come to the top, you actually have to collect different opinions. And every teacher is unique. But again, to understand the whole subject at the end, the most wide uh, way as much as possible to understand uh, dancing or any other activity, of course, you need a different opinions. And that opinions uh, are coming from a different informational resources and they are our great teachers. I was lucky. I have uh, a number of best teachers in the world in time when I was dancing. If I will say about my British teachers, like we have Bill and Bobby Irvine, it was Janet and Richard Cleave, Len Armstrong, Lindsay and Stephen Hillier, Kenny Marion Welsh. Um, it was Hans Laxholm from Denmark, one of my most uh, influenced teachers, I will say. Of course, Peter Eggleton, uh, Karl Breuer. In Latin, it was great. Aspen Salmberg, Colin James, Raymond Murugan. But, and all of them play a very special role in uh, the way I start to understand dancing. In my dance quality, uh, in my performance, everyone gives something, a part of their heart and a piece of their brain. But it was also a great teacher in Russia, in the club I used to dance, and when I moved to Moscow from Ukraine in 1985, it was Ludmila and Stanislav Popov's. In 89, I went first time to Norway and met there the legendary Tor Flosik. And he became my major coach for six years of my last years of my dance career until 96 when I retired. So again, I will say that every opinion, teacher, or sometimes just a stranger in the cafe, when you drink any coffee with, or in the train, or in the plane, could play a very special role if you're ready to accept information, what you hear, and if that information just come to you in time and the way when you're ready to accept it. So be attentive, always be attentive, look around. The life given us a lot of signs, and our duty is to be attentive enough to mention that signs, to listen, to see, to feel, and then to use it. From all competitions or events that you have taken part, which you have the best memories and why? My dance career uh, lasted for 27 years. 27 years I was on a dance floor. When I counted how many partners I, I used to have, it was 13 partners. One, three, 13 partners. Uh, I've changed them mostly not because of uh, problems in the couple. When I was young, I was very short. And every time when after summer, I came back from holidays, summer holidays, my partner was like half or even one head taller than me. And it was not possible anymore to dance together. So I have to look for another partner. The next year it happened again and again. Late, it was another different reasons again why it happened, but still 27 years, 13 partners in my dance career. And of course, I used to dance a lot of competitions. Uh, every competition, let's call it now competition later, I will change that word for very special reason, but let's call it now because that's what uh, in the question from all competitions or events. I will say uh, beside local city, regional, country, all Soviet Union competitions, or at that time we used to have socialist camp and it was a championship of the socialist countries. Since in 1985, the, this iron wall was broken and the world started to be more united, East and West started to be more close to each other. And I was uh, above those luckiest generation of dancers in Soviet Union, who
who start to have opportunity to travel around the world, to take lessons from the best teachers, to compete at the best competitions, to compete with the best competitors. <coughs> I'm sorry, very, very true. Uh, and uh, of course, England at that time and up to now was playing a very special uh, role in dancing. And the British competitions, I must say, uh, left the best feelings and memories in my uh, head. Of course, Blackpool, because it's just great. International Championship, because of fabulous, unbelievable, beautiful and gorgeous uh, Royal Albert Hall. United Kingdom Championship, because from my point, this is the most comfortable event in the entire world. Absolutely great shape of the dance floor with the lighting. If or when you will dance United Kingdom in Bournemouth, you will see and find that this size of the floor is just exactly what you need for your routines. Assen, for 25 years I visited Assen as a dancer, as a judge later, because of the very special atmosphere of that competition. It used to be Slakharin before and later start to be called uh, dance in new place, Assen, in Holland. But one competition I have to say you, of course, staying very special in my mind and memory. It's my last comp when I retired, and that happened in 1996, again in the fabulous Royal Albert Hall. What well, interesting actually happened there, it happened two times in my life when I flew away from my body. Yeah, don't laugh, it's really happened. First, it was when I was 21 at my birthday, and second time that happened when I was staying and preparing myself for competition in uh, Royal Albert Hall. I remember how I was just fixed my uh, shirt, how I tie my bow tie, put my uh, collar and tail suit. And I really remember that I suddenly start to see myself from outside. That was very unusual. That was very unusual because feelings what I've got at that time, at that moment, I knew it will be my last competition, but it happens pretty occasionally. Day before, I didn't know that, but just evening before that, my partner told me that tomorrow we will dance our last competition. So I was full of emotions. I was full of thoughts about what's going on, why, uh, how I should dance now, what will be my future, uh, that was amazing. That was just fabulous. And uh, for that reason, of course, that competition is still in my, in my head. And one event I would like to mention here, it's not a competition, but it's a very special event in a dance world called Night of a Hundred Stars. It's always one of the evening, Monday evening, in this week of competitions around international. Night of a Hundred Stars running by BDF in London because this competition is very special, not competition, it is event, where dancing in fact presented the way which dancing in reality is, as an art. And if or when you will be invited to perform at Night of a Hundred Stars, where every invited couple has only one dance to perform, you will stay behind that curtain before you will be announced and invited to the dance floor. At that moment, you will understand that all your dance career up to that moment was just a one long step of preparation for that moment. Now this curtain will be open. You have to stand on that dance floor alone with your partner in front of all dance establishment sitting around the dance floor. And the only what you have to do Nobody care anymore about your dance techniques. Nobody care about your footwork, about sways, about your arm position. You just have to make this 
ballroom feel great towards your performance. And maybe you will be worried with a stand elevation. These people standing up only in front of great. So that's important at that moment to understand that in fact, what we're doing in our dance activity with regular competition uh, structure and schedule, in fact, is it just a preparation for dancer to be an artist? Because I believe, and everyone who used to listen to my lectures or who used to be at my lessons, I always mention that, that dancing is an art. It just have a competition structure which gives us a field, a possibility to improve our physical abilities, mental abilities, our soul abilities, to bring all of that finally to that point to be an artist, because dancing is a part of art. So that events, that competitions, which are still staying in my mind and still brings me a lot of memories from my dance career. Through your experience, which are the aspects that Latin and ballroom dancing has in common? That's pretty interesting, again, question. Because uh, we have two styles in our dance activity, ballroom and Latin. In both, there is a couple, man and woman, two oppositions, philosophy struggle and unity of those oppositions. That's what actually united these two styles. The general idea when men and women being enemies by the God's idea at the beginning and struggling with each other, for some reason are coming together, joining their heads, hands or bodies, using the one music, staying on the same dance floor, having the same reason to be pleased and for that reasons finding the way for unity to create a common unit from two oppositions this is actually which is united these two both styles they are different in the structure ballroom is always closed position and latin allowed you to separate it the music is different the style one is classic and other one is more wild and expressive. The costumes are different, but they're still based on the music. They're still based on the idea to create this unity and to place each other the best possible way. So let's say this is the something which is united these two styles. And I already mentioned to come together for oppositions, we need a third um, point, it's like a triangle. Um, two opposition could not come together without that third point. And in dancing, there is a common music. It is a common floor. It is a connecting points in your hands or areas in your body. It's a common goal. It's a common desire. All these are nature, which comes to be a third point in our partnership. So in fact, uh, people called us a dance couples, and this is opinion of observer. But in fact, it's a big, big secret, actually. I told about that at my lecture in Blackpool last year. In fact, it's three components in the partnership, men, woman and nature and nature playing a very special very important role in that combination and when dancers understand it and when they were good enough already mentally physically to understand how to be related to nature how to use natural laws how to take nature at the third component in the movement the magic happened. Nature starts to work physically because nature like it, nature created energy and a desire and necessity to move it. So dancers should just provide that track through their bodies where this energy, natural energy comes in 
and then the feeling that this is exactly the track which NATO wanted according to her rules and laws and then the nature start work and you just enjoying in happiness that's what happened with you when you are taking the planes which we are very missing now sitting at home or car or ship or train this is nature nature is working to bring that plane from i don't know milano or moscow or new york to london or somewhere else you just get sleep and wake up on another continent magic but that's what i mean nature so some clever people engineers scientists created that vehicles to transport your body in dancing we are scientists ourselves we are engineers ourselves and we have to understand how to make that vehicle correctly than to be just able to sit inside and drive through the beautiful music Next question, how important is, in your opinion, respect to the role of male and female in dancing? Hmm. And again, I will bring you back to my lecture in Blackpool. Actually, you could find it on my uh, YouTube channel called Amazing Dance World Leonid Pletnev and on my Facebook page. Uh, the lecture title was Universe Philosophy Dancing. And I used to talk there about these roles. Every time when I come to a new place, new city, new country, new club, at the lecture, I'm always asking the dancers. We have, as you think, it's two men and women in the partnership. Who is more important component, man or woman in the partnership? Think about that and believe me. Uh, in most places I've ever been, actually everywhere when it's a group class, I ask who think that that is a man. Normally all men are raising their hands, many ladies are raising their hands. When I say who think that this is a lady, nobody none. And then I tell to dancers, and that's where your problems start. Woman is a major component of the partnership same as in life she is a queen he is a prime minister so he is a manager who is running the business but in her kingdom and for her interest and pleasure so in fact man is a server and in black bullet the lecture i told that if you look at the costumes for example what we wear they reflect that idea pretty obvious Women always brighten in the different colors and shapes of the dress and stones and special makeup and hairs. And men, if you talk about ballroom dancing, for example, always have black and white tail suit or white short black trousers when you're juveniles and the tie. That's pretty obvious showing that this is a uniform for manager to serve his queen. So this is my answer. But later, again, manager has a duty to serve her, his queen. And to make it the best possible way, he has to be able to read her mind, to listen to her wishes, and then to satisfy them. And when he do it the best possible way, then queen awarded her manager, her prime minister, her man, the best possible way. So both sides finally will be pleased. And this is the idea actually why we come to each other. What is the reason for men to come and invite? And look, women take a decision finally to say yes and dance with you or for some reason say no. If she say yes, the both has the same reason. He came because he has sympathy, maybe not love yet, later, but at least sympathy. She's answering because she expected, again, she uh, feel that that could be pleasant. And when after two minutes of dance, both sides are satisfied and happy, then you have chance again that the man come again and invited the same lady. And that lady again will say yes. On the very, very top dancing, 
And that's why, but, but the, let's say that the general way of education and dance and tell that man is leading, lady is following. Lead and follow. This is one of the most popular and important dioma in our dance theory. But as you look from that point of roles we play in, to be honest, I don't know really. And that's why when I'm teaching, I'm telling couples that man should lead his lady mentally. She is realizing his mental leadership physically on a dance floor and then when physically following his lady. So I don't know. And at the very, very top, I must tell you one interesting um, story which happened at UK one year when I was already judging that competition, which I'm lucky to judge international UK now for more than 20 years. And that was competition of professional letting, and I was not on the panel. I used to ju judge another uh, group day before. And uh, we were staying with my friend, and it was final. And just in front of us, it was rumba. Sergei Surkov and Melia used to dance their rumba. I always liked their rumba. For me, at that time, at that set of dances, who competed at that time, uh, the rumba was the best. And this time it was no exclusion. It was fabulous. And my friend asked me, so Leonid, did you like that rumba? I said, of course I like it. That's the best rumba from my opinion. And my friend asked me, why? And I said, simply because that was obviously demonstration who is who and what happened. They used to have uh, a part of their routine when Sergei was staying in the press line, deep press line, carrying her hand, and Mele was playing a little bit with the audience there. And then by their routine, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Sergei had to turn her face back to her and then invite to move passing him. But for some reason, Melia was a bit overplayed. She was so excited. She found someone there in the audience and she was deeply in that action. But because of counts and because of Sergei's desire, as it should be, he just turned her or just pulled her to lead for next figure. And Melia suddenly turned to him, look at him, then turn back and continue playing with the idea she wanted to express at that moment. Sergei just like showed that he's very sorry to interrupt his partner. And then she tell him, now you can lead me. And then he lead you for next uh, element. That was so great and such a great example. Who is who in dancing? A woman. Next question. Today you are one between the biggest teachers and judges in the world. Thank you very much. What disturbs you the most while you're watching your generation on the floor? And what do you like instead? As any activity, dancing is um, in progress, evolution. Evolution is a progress according to the laws of nature. And dancing is improving. If you look at the dancers 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30, 50, 60, now you have time for that. Finally sit at home and using your computers. Of course, it's a lot of changes happened. But what I don't like that very often today, especially in some organizations who take uh, a risk to move dancing out from the art area into sport area, that the dancing starts to be very physical, powerful, strong. When the speed starts to be on the surface, when I see that dancers are really trying to make it that way, to express observer, audience or judge, and that's what I find ridiculous and horrible. 
power is important to make your performance more powerful. Speed is important, but speed of your dancing could not be faster than speed and tempo of music which is playing. Performance, artistic product, that's what is a dancing of the couple on a dance floor. You like a piece of art, you like a paint picture of painting, or you like a musician notes on the paper, or like a literature, the words on the white paper. You are a piece of art. And it's not about how uh, loud musicians are playing. It's not about how many colors the painter put on the picture. It's just about expression of observer. It's about opinion, feelings which artist is using at the moment of creation. That's why I'm completely against this physical exaggeration, which I very often see in dancing. And also, uh, I would like to see more as I told in the previous question, man and woman relation. If you look again on a dance floor, how many egoists are there? Looks like they're together, having the set of colors in their costumes, doing a similar figures at the same time. But in fact, here and here does not believe they are together. And that's why the best are the best. If you look at their performance, especially in our World Dance Council uh, competitions or events, you can see that's really a human relation. That's what dancing is about. Their performance, I'm talking about the best now, are really touching your heart. It's really take all your attention at the moment when you look on the dance floor. That's what you have to think about and produce yourself. In ballroom, for example, I hate to see this oversways or that high arms position. Uh, again, the reason for this oversweighing, overspeeding is to be faster, to be more attractive, but the, the, the choice of to be attractive is completely wrong. Educationally, I'm engineer architect. So I'm looking on the dancing, of course, also not only from the artistic uh, part, but as an engineer. And for me, the movement of a couple down the dance floor is just a cal calculation of the balance of that system from two bodies, which are moving on a certain track in that space. That's a pure technical task. And then, of course, the individuality and charisma come in. But first of all, from this uh, moving part, from the balance part, it's just a technical task, how to place your body according to each other in the system and according to your standing foot to produce the more possible pressure on the dance floor. Punkt. So when I hear that some teachers sometimes telling, let's make a bigger shape here or more sway or whatever, I'm always feel a bit um, disappointed because it's not about personal opinion, in fact, of teacher or dancers wish to do that for some reason. It is a reason from nature. Then again, if the components of that task will be changed, if direction will be different, if speed of movement will be different, the height or the difference in the height of dances will be different. It's many aspects included. Then, if we change them or they've changed themselves, then that could be another task. And then, for example, this way will be different, but not because of desire of me as a dancer or a teacher, but because of a different set of conditions from that task. Think about that, analyze your dancing from that point, and you will understand what I mean. 
Next question is, could you consider some useful exercise for all dancers, ballroom and Latin that help to remain focused and active during this hot period of world quarantine? I must say, beside all bad influence on us, on human lives, on businesses around the world, I believe that everything which happens in our life has a reason from nature point. And why this situation with all of us happened, all of us, never mind which nationality are, we are never mind which country we are living, never mind which businesses we are involved. All of us now are sitting at home and having time to think. And in any activity to achieve uh, success, First of all, you should have information. What? How? Again, who've been at my lectures and lessons, uh, you know that 60-70% of lessons I'm talking. Because uh, in my book, I wrote a book about life and dance and dancing life called With Reverence. One of the phrases from my book is that the body movement is a reflection on the mind movement. So whatever our body is doing is just a reflecting of the signals coming from the brain through the nervous to our parts of the body. So when we're telling, because we're seeing that, and we're telling that you're doing the wrong footwork, it's not really correct uh, idea, correct explanation, correct wordings. It will be correct to say, you're thinking wrong, that's why your foot is doing mistake. Because foot doesn't care, heel or toe, inside edge or outside edge, flat, or drive through, or whatever, bend knee. It's only commands which come in from our brain. So in fact, the mistake is not in our body, it's in our brain. That's why to change that mistake, which observer seen by eyes, dancer only could change by change the commands which his brain sending to the body. That's why I, as a teacher, have to change your brain idea. Why you send in that wrong command and then your body reflect it wrongly. That's why I'm talking a lot, explaining dances. Why? In China, my students call me Mr. Why, because I'm always asking why? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? You always have to have an answer. Why? That's why now, during this difficult period, difficult from that point that we are sitting at home, you have absolutely great possibility now to improve your brain. To read, to listen, to talk, to take lessons again now, but without being uh, thinking that it's a competition tomorrow when we have to make another natural turn or hip twist or uh, alemana, but just being concentrated on the information, verbal information. So use this opportunity now. Take lessons online as a single student, as a couple, as a group to save you money, but find teachers who could explain you that why. Believe me, after that period, just imagine that you broke your leg. Occasionally you broke your leg and you have to spend one month at home or in the hospital and at home. But you want to continue. You want to be back on a dance floor and to be better. So this break could be and should be used to come back even better than you was before. So use this opportunity now. It's so many options. And I'm on your service as well as many other great teachers who are around you in different countries and have an internet now. Actually, you could, you could reach anybody, anybody and everybody, I'm sure, will be uh, glad to share their mental ideas, their information about why and how. In your opinion, what couples should never miss during their performance to make them special? First, to answer that question, I want you to understand something very important. It is three 
parts in our business, not only in ours, but number one, it is information. Number two is practice. And number three is demonstration. So information, in the previous question I just told you, this is a time when we are changing our mind. We got a new ideas. We feel and understand the difference between idea which I used to have before, and I occasionally understand that's wrong or not enough correct, and a new idea which is explained by my teacher or somehow I've got this information from another resource which is better than that. So the lesson in fact is mostly for your brain. Then because dancing is a visual uh, part of art and observer is only looking by eyes and listening by ears, we have to realize this information and this mental ideas through our bodies, through body movement. That's why we come to part number two, practice. Then you go into the dance floor after that lesson or information you received and practice. And this is only one way how to change your body, which could not think, but could remember. We call it muscles memory. So by repetition to repeating, by repeating one by another, 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 another time, a certain movement, we downloaded this information from our brain down into our muscles. It's like you downloaded uh, a new you know, processing system or app in your computer. It takes time. It always takes time. We always want to make it or to get it as fast as possible, but it still needs a period of time. So it's only one way to use your brain control with this new idea, new information, and do it again and again and again with your body. To move them, to move your body to the point when you could switch off mind control, but to be sure that your body is doing exactly what your mind wanted without being controlled. And then your mind could be concentrated on any other important subjects. And finally, we come to number three, which I call demonstration. So first, what you have to understand that something what you called competition, in fact, is not a competition. From that structure, it's just a demonstration or performance. So from point of dances, you're not competing with each other. We are in activity when we are not even touch each other. We are not struggle. When boxer against boxer, they are really competing against each other. Yeah? Or when wrestler against wrestler, they competing against each other. We are not. So the duty and the goal of each couple on a dance floor is not to win above another ones, but just to dance and perform the best possible way. And then observers, either audience by clapping or judges by marks, they look at your performance and demonstration as a competition to find the winner. The better performance will win. So remember that very important issue. Don't think about to be competitors, competitors. Because when you think about competition, you start nervous. When you think about placing, you start nervous. When you're nervous, your brain computer could not work as normal as it was practice and got information. So you put a virus into your brain computer and that virus start to destroy the regular, correct work of your computer. That means your computer, your brain now is sending the wrong signals to your body or not signals at all, like you're shocked. So what happened with your body? Your body is blocked. You could not perform anymore. And of course, your performance, your demonstration level is going down. And as reaction on that, the judges, the expert, doesn't like your performance and put you down in placing. So there is no competition in our world. It is a performance or demonstration. So this is my, let's say, the best uh, advice for you on that, on that question how to make your performance special. And now I come to the last question, 
how the high-level competitors can manage the pressure and control the stress during the important competition. I already start to answer that question again. The top competitors are a confident persons. So the brain, their brain is mostly calm, confident. In fact, to be confident, you should have a good result. Then you start to be confident. But to have a good result, <laughs> you have in order to be confident, you should have result, and in order to have result, you should be confident. It's like a closed circle. So how to open it? Just to play confidence. First, remember there is no competition, so take off the reasons why you start to be nervous. Take off the reasons we determine your brain computer from working normally. And competitors, top competitors, which I have, um, I'm glad to be involved in teaching many of them. That's what I'm explaining them at the lessons. And that's why actually they are the best later. One of the reasons that when they understand their ideas, they stop worries. There is no worry anymore. That's why they're controlling their mind, they're controlling their body. Body is trained already that way. So commands are recognizable for the body and body reacted the way which dancer wanted. And that's why performance, as soon as it starts to be the best uh, on the last uh, practice or last uh, lesson, last practice, it will be the same on a competition. I remember one story which Marcus and Karen told me once, my big friends. Uh, they told me that they've been prepared for Blackpool and they have a lessons with a great Benny Talmai, a flying Dutchman, a great teacher who actually uh, used to teach at that time all best dancers uh, whom Marcus and Karen competed against as well. When they come to that lesson, uh, the Benny asked, which dance do you want to, to work today? They told Foxtrot, please. The Benny put the music on they dance foxtrot and then the Benny told, you know guys, the foxtrot you just performed me now is enough to win Blackpool in three days time or one week time. Let's drink coffee. And the rest of that lesson, they drink coffee. Do you think Marcus and Karen paid for that lesson? Of course they did. If I will be Marcus at that moment, I will pay three times just for that simple words, when the great, one of the most, most, most uh, great uh, teacher in the world, telling you such a words, being seen the other dancers, lesson before it was a couple, uh, another from the final, afterward another finalist, and he tell you now, relax, you are the best. Do as you did it now, and you could win. So it's again about this, what you think, what is in your brain. Do you really believe that you're the best? Do you really believe that your physical conditions are the best? Do you believe that your mental conditions and information you're holding in your brain and you working with every day is the best, comes from the best resource? If you believe that your soul is mostly uh, beautiful and sensitive, that your relation with your partner is unique. If you believe, and this is really fact, then it's no doubt. We as a judges, we just reflect or staying around the dance floor. We just reflecting on what's going on there. And if I see the best couple on the dance floor, from my opinion, I mark it first, simply. It was pleasure. Thank you, Viva Latino team, to choose me to share my stories and my ideas. And uh, again, dear dancers, these bad times will be gone anyway. Sooner or later, better sooner, believe me, very soon, we will be back. 
And um, what happened? I come now to the last question. How, in your opinion, the dancing world can develop after this forced stop caused by pandemic that touched our world? I'm a bit confused with my uh, expectations. First of all, dancing was, is, and will be a relation between two persons. I'm talking about now ballroom dancing, Latin American dancing, a partnership. So we could not keep a social distance in our activity. Otherwise, the Peabody dance, Americans know what does it mean, the dance of Peabody, called Peabody. It's not really popular, but I've seen that in American competitions. Uh, some social schools are doing that. Uh, this, dancing is, this dance is dancing in position on a very, very uh, far distance from each other, still keeping the hold, but on a long distance. The story was that uh, the dance uh, was created by a postman. And this guy was very, very fat. He has a very, very big belly. So <laughs> when he danced with any partner, he has to hold his arms very, very much in front of him. And uh, that was the story behind the techniques of this dance. I don't think we will come to that. Or another example, what I already mentioned about this overswaying, even in the position between when lady and man are staying too far in ballroom, out from each other, like they don't, don't even see each other. That's completely not the way the dancing will uh, improve, even because of pandemic and necessity. We will still come together cheek to cheek, we're dancing cheek to cheek. So we will be more careful, we will clean our hands with soap before practice or comps, of course. I don't think we will wear masks, at least it will be horrible, or maybe it will become somehow a part of our costumes, I don't know, but we still will come together. And dance world, is now missing to be in the ballrooms. All your students are sitting at home, you providing them now, or your teachers providing you now, uh, online lessons, online camps, even the online competitions, which again, I find okay, but that's not something which could replace, of course, real reality. So the people from dancing, they're missing to be back. So the business will come back very soon. Of course, our financial conditions will be weaker than before, but again, we will work hard, all of us, and we will be back on the normal track very soon. And competitions will be running again, but not competitions. Remember, look at the competition as another possibility to perform. When you come to the comp, it's just an option. You just heard that in Blackpool there is a beautiful ballroom called Impress Ballroom in Winter Gardens. And you would like to perform there. And then you send your application. And when you come there expecting to perform at that beautiful ballroom, you just found that, oops, too many couples around. It's just because they also heard about this beautiful ballroom and they also have dreamed to perform there. An organizer have to put you in the groups called HITS and that's why you're performing, you're demonstrating by few of them at the same time on a dance floor, just because time is limited. So it's not a competition. It's just a great, another great option to demonstrate your abilities to perform at the very special places around the world. So I wish you to spend again the time now at home for the best possible way to improve your brain to improve your soul. Again, another phrase from my book, that the poor soul could not produce a rich dance. Remember about that. And I wish you good luck. And see you very soon in the ballrooms around the dance world. Bye-bye. It was Leonid Platnev. My pleasure.